I know, but you're gonna be okay. Oh, I'll be okay. Yeah, uh, uh, no, no, Leslie or Kim this morning uh, filming it. Uh, Jamie's filling in. But... Jamie's rocking it. She's yep. doing just fine. Well, she's an expert at it. Yes, she is. Yes. A professional. So, Leslie getting married. Leslie's getting married tomorrow. And Kim. Kim is maid of honor, and she's off to, Sweet. to that wedding as well. So. That's awesome. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. The wedding oh, right that's here. That's wonderful. Uh, both are away. Yeah, Maine and and uh, oh wow, and uh, Massachusetts. Do, okay. Do we get Good. invitations? I'm gonna. Ch- I'll check okay, the mail check this the morning. Mail. Right. No, I couldn't go. I had to do the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is a good excuse. I got to use that one. Yeah. Um, Turkey bucks. How, how's it going? It's phenomenal. You must be. You must be promoting it all the time or something. Because, I love turkey bucks because man. I mean they the uh, customer service reps are coming down on a continuum, getting more cards, more cards, more That's cards. It, so people are just flocking in to get turkey bucks cards. There you go. Turkey box starting uh, is going on. You get a stamp. Every time you spend $10 at the co-op for every 20 stamps, you get $5 off your Thanksgiving turkey, tofu turkey, Thanksgiving sides, fresh bakery pies, or Thanksgiving groceries. Oh, this runs oh. through November 19th, if I remember Yes, correctly. then it's redemption okay. for a week, uh, yep. and you can redeem it for anything you want, pretty much. Your turkeys, your meals, yep, your, anything you want. your groceries. Yeah. Turkey box is a big deal. It's up there with money bucks. I mean, it's just one of those catchy little hooks that, People are like, well, I'm going to do it anyway, so why not get well, something? Well, I'm going to come in every week anyway. I'm going to yeah. be spending money here a- anyway. But I've been getting money back. Yep. It's a good thing. I love it. It's working exceptionally it. well. So um, before we move on uh, to our guest, anything else you'd like to chat about? Yes, I would. Uh, uh-huh. and, and, our guests, uh-huh. and our guests have pages of notes. I know. To, to, <clears throat> so I'm I do, looking at I, this going, oh, my God. I do want to get right to them. Did you say um, we have two hours? <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> uh, but tomorrow, October Doris 5th. Doris Kern's good one. You got 11 minutes. Come yeah, on. I know. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow, October 5th, is talent show. So yep. in the making yep. for well over a year. For not, there's probably about 40, 45 tickets left. So, uh, this is uh, like having a child for you. You've been in labor for 10 months. Uh, I, it's like, come on, yeah. we got to deliver it's time. this. October 6th is going to be so nice. Oh, uh, you know, waking up and uh, looking at the to-do list, and it'll be empty. It'll be uh, it'll be quite nice. But know. after a phenomenal show. After, after a phenomenal, a phenomenal show. show. Is there still a, uh, still a buzz surrounding the talent show? Absolutely. Good, that's great. Absolutely. Good. The, the uh, acts, I think it's going to be very memorable. Uh, you know, I don't know which which of the acts I like the most. I've got two or three favorites, but I'll oh, let everybody good. else uh, decide what who their favorites are. But uh, tickets are 35 bucks at Bank of New Hampshire Stage. Uh, Bank of New Hampshire stage uh, box office opens at uh, 12. Okay, okay so great. So if you're listening and you want to go, I would go down there today. There's about 40 tickets left. Beauty. That's it? Beauty. That's awesome. Tickets left. That is awesome. That's going to make you feel good. It's going to be a great house. It does. I mean, okay. I wanted a sold out show. I'm pretty yep. sure it will. If yep. there's two or three left, I'm buying them. And then it <laughs> no, will be a sold out show. There will be walk-in. You watch. There <laughs> will be walk-in. Who, who are the judges? Um, we have uh, Jennifer uh, Kredovic, um, um, City Council, okay, um, nice. and uh, Ernesto Burden. Uh, he works with the uh, Concord uh, Monitor uh, okay. in their uh, digital advertising. Um, and then um, Carter LaLiberty. Uh, he was one of the contestants. He didn't make it. Right, He's right. 12 years old. He, he was the one that came in here. We yes. interviewed him. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. When we first but announced he the had, show. Yep. You know, he was so uh, – he visited the uh, uh, Concord Coalition's uh, Resource Center um, and their emergency winter shelter – um, he wrote a great quote as to why he was glad to be involved. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, he had he, he really um, uh, had the spirit of what the coalition's work is all about. And I asked, so I asked him to be a judge, and he was he was thrilled. Okay. Oh, that's okay. wonderful. More importantly, can they be bribed? <laughs> Just well, saying. <laughs> well, I don't know if they can, but there is buy a vote. Okay. And, it's, uh, ah, and, and, ah, and, and that is go. totally, so you can actually go to uh, ConcordHomeless.org right now and five bucks a vote. Yep. Um, buy a, a vote for your favorite. I like and, it. And, and night, you're making a donation. Well. And you're making a attending. donation yep. so you can and feel good about it. I like it. I like it. Uh, Dr. Pam Herring, back in the house. I know. Good to have you yeah. back, doctor. Great to see you. Uh, you. Specializing in classic homeopathy and functional medicine. I had an office in Concord for, oh, I don't know, three decades or so. Mm-hmm. Something like that. More than a couple of weeks. <laughs> Instrumental in the process of licensing of naturopaths as primary care doctors back in 1995. Uh, Dr. Herring can be reached at Dr. Dr. Pamela Herring at gmail.com, or you can call 491-7321. Also in this morning, Julie Sawyer. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Peter. Uh, licensed nurse, 
certified health coach and holistic practitioner, over 27 years of health care experience. She helps people who want to regain control of their health, lose weight, and improve their digestion by holistically addressing diet, lifestyle, exercise, and stress management. That sounds like a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it? Um, well, it Do you can, make it fun at least? Yes, we make it fun. We definitely go at their own pace, Thank so you. it's not so overwhelming. Do, do, I would think it, if it's at your own pace, your chances of turning your back and walking away are better. But when you have to do, okay, within four days we expect this. There's a lot of pressure on yeah, that. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to create some anxiety. So we do. Um, I do three- and six-month programs. We meet every other week. And we, I give them, you know, between uh, two to three recommendations each each visit. Okay. So it's, you know, bite-sized pieces, and then they're making slow incremental progress, and we're working on changing those old uh, detrimental habits. Habits, habits, Dr. Herring, habits can be good and habits can be bad. Yeah. Um, how do I, even though I know in my brain I shouldn't be doing this, <laughs> how do I break that habit? Whoa, that's a good question. <laughs> that is a good question. And I know. Left side, right side of my brain, I know. Yeah. yeah. Intellectually, I understand. Yeah, yeah, and I still do it. I still jump in feet first. Well, I'm a believer in the, the bite the bullet theory. You know, you got to make a decision. Is, you know, what's it going to be worth to you? And then decide, I'm just going to do it. And I've, I've done that. That's how I got off the ground in my career is I got sick and I... Decided to do a macrobiotic diet, okay, which cured my ailment, prevented surgery, and I thought, "Whoa, this is powerful." There's something to this. Food yeah, can heal. And so, then, of course, absolutely. I went back to my old habits, and it happened again. Whoa! So I did the same thing, and it cleared up, and I was fine. So, see, see to me, procrastination is huge, <laughs> yeah, uh, because yeah. anybody in New Hampshire, New England, I don't care. We come out of winter, and they're going. I want to do this and this and this. I've got May, June, July, August, September. I got plenty of time. Oh yeah. Okay, I've got June, July, August, September. Okay, I've got August. Oh my God, it's October. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and we that's sit real. there in yeah. our mind, that's real. and the same thing with your body. It's like I got. Pl- I'm only 27. I'm only 35. I'm only 42. Yeah. And then you wake up one day and you're 62, going, "Damn, what happened?" But well, my motivation was I didn't want another surgery. I'd had surgeries as a child, and mm-hmm. I thought, you know, they're just going to keep cutting everything out. I'm going to try something different. Mm-hmm. And it worked. But you their know. pages of notes are on a different topic. No, we're going to talk ticks, I know, but I wanted to talk, yes. uh, at least yeah. g- give them both a chance. Uh, and Lyme disease. We've talked about this before. I know you're, you're big in this, and I applaud you for this, Greg, trying to keep it out there. I do it. Uh, ticks and Lyme disease, trying mm-hmm. to keep it out front. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just um, terrible when you, you know to see what the effect is on on individuals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Julianne is on this show all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't really know it could uh, affect your brain function, but um, I didn't uh, either. Absolutely, I, I thought it was yeah. just a, a body motor function. You know, no, arms. No. Uh, Julianne got straight A's all through college. Um, they asked her the other day to make eleven o'clock on a piece of paper. She couldn't do it. Wow. And that's just a function of the Lyme disease. Yes. Do we so it's just Shoot. phenomenal that, wow. you know, I just mm-hmm. had no idea. I mean, I, you she's a young the, girl. Yeah. Um, you could see the, you know, the physical things that it does to you, but I didn't realize that it, that it had, uh, mm-hmm. you know, an impact on your, on your, your cognitive functions as well. And mm-hmm. the heart. Yes. And the heart? And the heart, yes. Yeah, as a cardiac nurse, um, you know, I've had patients in the hospital who have come in with complete heart block. They're very, very sick, and you can die from that. So, um, and so many people don't even realize that they've been bit by a tick because the tick is so tiny. Right. So they can be quite ill um, when they're first diagnosed. See, I'm really hoping, uh, I think they were calling for freezing temperatures tonight. Right. Around 32. Yeah. I'm really hoping for that. Yeah. Um, because we are coming to the point, right about now, uh, tick uh, populations were kind of quiet August and September because you had the spring, it was rampant. Then they lay the eggs. The eggs come back in August or September. They come out with a vengeance because we're in the woods until Mm -hmm. mid-November. We're still picking ticks off ourselves. So they're coming back. So if you think, well, they're gone, no, they are not gone. It's the next generation this year that's coming through. you got to get ready for it. Right, and the frost is not taking them out. Well, it's going to slow them down it a little bit. It can slow them down, but it's not going to be like Skeeters and take them out. We have found in the woods that if we're hunting 
in November. Mm -hmm. When the temperatures are 25, 30, 35 degrees, tick activity is like non-existent. Great. Temperatures hit 42, 44 degrees. Bang. Which they can. All of a sudden, still, yeah. you get a November day, temperature goes to 55. Temperature hits 42, 44. They're everywhere. That's like, so I keep hoping for the cooler temperatures yeah, when I'm going to be yeah, in the woods. Yeah, it's going to help them go dormant. Not, it's not going to kill them. Right. No, they'll right. Go, they'll, yeah, go, they'll go, go to sleep. Go Does to anything kill them? Yeah, see? Yeah, not, yeah I've heard not that, that we figured they, out they've yet. done uh, tests where they put ticks in the freezer for you know a long period of time. They pull them out. You know, after they thaw out, they're alive. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Now, see, I know with the moose ticks, uh, which has been taking such a toll on our moose population, they're, they want little snow on the ground mm -hmm. and then some cold temperatures so the tick falls off hits the snow and dies but typically that's not what happens they right. get the cold they fall into the duff then they just lay down the, and and get insulated for the there, winter yeah, yeah, yeah they're fine yeah what are some other mm -hmm. symptoms that you see that people would probably not uh, they would mistake for something different and not necessarily lyme um that would be flu-like symptoms you know you're you're aching all over sure. you have a sore throat mm -hmm. you have a headache um you know, quite often it's, it can be confused with flu-like symptoms. However, if you're experiencing those symptoms in the summertime when it's not flu season, mm. um, that would be a good indicator that you should probably um, make an appointment with your doctor. Right. Yeah, but, okay, now here's here's part of my issue. Yeah. The doctors don't know a lot. So it, it, is it incumbent upon me to say, I want a Lyme disease test? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you because have to be your own it, advocate. Well, that's what I'm saying because, uh, unfortunately, I get the sense that the medical community is kind of, well, we don't know how to diagnose it because it's flu. All right, I'll treat you for the flu. Yeah. Right. But it's, it's a bigger it's issue. Not, it's not clear cut like Lyme disease makes your right elbow right. do something goofy. Right. It's not clear cut. Yeah, and less than 30% of patients actually have that classic bullseye rash. You know, and True, if you're, to, and if you're which waiting, is, which is a sign, yeah, yeah, and if you're waiting to see that rash in order to diagnose, you know, it's just, you know, for most people, it's just not going to happen that way. So, so what is the difference? I mean, when I say I want a Lyme disease test, what what does that encompass? Are they just drawing blood and like normal, and then just testing it for Lyme? Is that it? They're looking for antibodies. Okay. Yeah, if you've been bitten by a Lyme tick, you'll have antibodies. And so they'll be able to pick those up and get a level of antibodies, too. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, okay. that level can be monitored, but it, um, you could be you could have taken care of the Lyme disease but still have those antibodies for up to a year later. So it, it doesn't, it doesn't, mean go, that it doesn't still, go away, huh? Well, they do eventually. Okay. But uh, they might hang around for a while, months or, or even a and, But aren't there different variations of Lyme, too? Do they test? Do they screen for the different variations? Or is it, you know, one, oh. one and you hope for the best? Well, that's the tricky part. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, Lyme is called the great imitator because it looks like everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yep. arthritis and so on. So um, you, you have to be your own advocate. You have I, to be your I, own I, advocate. I have to sit there and yeah. say, I want this. You do. And, and then there's all these co-infections. So when they are testing for Lyme, you might want to ask them to, to test for some of the co-infections. Like? There's about 20 of them. Really? And Phew. they can be, um, you know, uh, it's uh, Bartonella and Babesia and... Let's see. I have a whole list here. The, and these are like tributaries off of Lyme? Like you get Lyme and then... No, they're different diseases. Like Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is a co-infection. Is Poaxin all... one of these variations? Yes, okay. They're all passed okay. on by fleas and ticks and, right. and uh -huh. even cat scratches and okay. so on. So the, these um, insects can be, can be infected by several right. different other things, and mm -hmm. they'll pass on those. So is there a natural bacteria? remedy... To Lyme disease, or am I talking massive antibiotics to kill it? Both. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, that's fair. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You want to, well. Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm also. Um, She's doing this without the notes. You know these things, Craig? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what she wrote this for. But okay, go ahead. That's, a, that's just a crutch for us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to so, write it down. Um, Writing it down helps you remember. It's a good Yeah, thing. so I was diagnosed with Lyme disease back in 2007. And, you know, when I was diagnosed, you know, I it was in the summertime. You do, know. You, do you know, do you, do you remember when you got bit? Uh, yeah, it was okay. like. You know, it was like July, August, okay. and mm -hmm. you know, I had the bullseye, so oh, okay. I was I was very lucky. I had the flu symptoms and the joint pain, and you know, I went to see my doctor, and he said, "Oh, you have a little touch of Lyme." 
So put me on <laughs> antibiotics. A little touch of lime. Like something lime. you put in your soda. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just want to put on. up a chicken. Yeah. 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 No big deal. We'll put you on doxycycline for a week. And um, so I did that and I felt better. And then a few days later, it started to come back. So I was having the same symptoms again. So then, How were you feeling? What was, what what came back? Um, the joint pain, okay. the knee yeah. pain. It hurt to climb the stairs, aching all over. Mm -hmm. um, even the rash was starting to come back. Oh. So it just really throbbed. And again, I was one of the lucky ones because I did have a bullseye rash. Right. And they put me on back on the doxycycline for three more weeks. Okay. And then that seemed to take care of it. However... Um, yeah, I hate when they do the however. However, yeah. 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 So you're feeling okay. Back in uh, 2012, I had a um, a death in my family that uh, my father had passed away. And when you have a big stressful event, mm -hmm. um, things like that can resurface again. So the Lyme doctor that I see, you know, kind of um, explains it this way. It's kind of like chicken pox and shingles. Really? Right. Yeah. Okay. So once you have it, you always have it, but it can it's go. It's in there. It right. can go dormant. Yep. And then you have a big stressful event, um, and then it can flare up. It can flare up again. Bang. No, no. What was the stuff that they used to treat you with? So my Lyme doctor. Yeah. What so, did you say it was? Something doc oxaline. Oh, oh, originally it was doxycycline. Back with the original okay. diagnosis. That, so that treats the symptoms, but it doesn't treat the Lyme. Well, no, it does kill off the bacteria. It does. Okay. So and, where does it come back when you get stressed? How does the lime hide in the body? So, well, it can create this um, this this thing called a biofilm, you know, where it forms this sticky mucus layer. Mm -hmm. um, and then gross. it can go dormant for a while, waiting yeah. for the right conditions to become active again. It's like ticks. Wow. It's yeah. like ticks in the winter. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's just dormant in there. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking of this gross thing sitting around, just <laughs> hanging. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we have to take a quick break. Yes, why, we why are you looking at me? We have to take a break. <laughs> I'm, I'm all because I'm going to talk to Greg about turkey bucks. All right, so <laughs> no, we're talking about lime turkey today. bucks. I'm turkey not, bucks, I'm turkey not bucks. punching your turkey bucks card oh, unless you can purchase it. <laughs> man, you're so hard. We'll take a break. Thank God you're not a judge at the talent show. Uh, we'll take a break. Back with more right after this. Dr. Pamela Herring and Julie Sawyer. Is it Julie Sawyer, RN? Julie RN. Sawyer, RN, okay. Yep. Um, uh, in with us talking uh, Lyme and tech. Now, um, in the time we have left, uh, Julie, you said you changed your, like, whole being yes. because of this. When you change stuff, what are you talking about? Diet or, or uh, uh, water intake? or I mean, what, what did you do? Yeah, so... Um, so um, back, you know, that sort of bacteria and disease in general will uh, flourish in an inflamed body. So what is the standard American diet? <laughs> you know, it's yeah. very high. Inflaming. In, yeah. yeah, very yeah. <laughs> high in carbohydrates, high in sugar. Um, I thought I had, I was eating a healthy diet, but, you know, it wasn't anywhere the level that I needed to get. So, you know, the average woman should have less than 25 grams of sugar a day. So I had to cut back on sugar increase the fruits and vegetables to at least seven to nine uh, servings. Wow. You know, because powerful antioxidants sure. and nutrients sure. to help, uh, to help um, you know, give you the nutrition you need to, to fight that off. Was mm -hmm. it a sacrifice or did you adjust to it okay? Um, it took a little bit of time, um, you know, getting rid of gluten. That was huge. You wow. know, we love really? our bread and pasta. Yeah, and I gluten. know, I know. Yeah, well, it's inflammatory. It's, it's inflammatory. Real, oh, so, okay, yeah. All yeah. Right. Yeah, so it's very hard on pretty much everyone's digestion, you know, to different degrees. Mm -hmm. Now, you said uh, 25, yeah. uh, 25 grams? 25 grams, which is not very of much sugar. Yeah, it's of not sugar. Much. Yeah, you can For get, men, it's You 35. can get to that fast. What, what, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, what's the average? Do we know what the average it's, sugar it's, intake is? It's pretty close to 100, is it really? 100 grams okay. a day for okay. a lot of people. Yes. I mean, on a good day. Five. Uh, <laughs> or a bad day. Then they're a bad day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I was having a conversation with my daughter. She was um, getting this type of protein bar. And I said, what's the sugar on it, Michaela? Nice. And 19 grams. Well, you have almost your whole day's worth in one yeah. In one healthy, quick little bar. Yeah, yeah. considered yeah. healthy little bar. So, um, 
So anyway, so um, really increasing um, your your nutrition um, and also stress management was huge was very huge mm-hmm. because when you're stressed, it does create inflammation in the body. So right. meditation, yoga, and really um, looking at your life and putting things into perspective. Do I need to uh, vacuum my house? Can I live with those um, dust bunnies in the corner? Yeah, um, yeah you can. Can I live yeah. with you? That's so cool. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need a little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is anyone work. immune to Lyme? Is, is, you know, does, does, does Lyme affect Good everyone? Good question. Well, it's it. That is a very good question. Um, we don't know the answer to that. I mean, the ticks are very tiny. Yeah. Um, not everyone gets seems to get these. Well, not symptoms. every tick has Lyme disease either. Yes. Right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's this like you true. winning the lottery. I mean, if yeah. you had the right <laughs> diet, you were saying diet had a great degree of of controlling it or um, you know reducing it, eliminating it. But um, but if what if you had the right diet to begin with, are you less susceptible to getting oh, Lyme? Oh, good. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, question. that is a very good question. You know, that's, Look at un- it. that's I know that's unknown at this time. <laughs> um, but it, I would think it would certainly. I mean, what do you think, Doctor Herring? Decrease your chances of having that inflammatory response. Uh, I think it would decrease, it would be a milder response perhaps or more easily mm-hmm. controlled, you know, mm-hmm. with um, mm. the treatments. Yeah. Uh, I've treated a case without antibiotics. She had been bitten. She was tested positive. And we used some herbs and homeopathic remedies. And, um, you know, she already ate pretty well. And she got over it and hasn't had a problem since. So, do, you do, know. Do, do, uh, Dr. Aaron, do you find yourself sitting there as now everyone's looking around going, Look at this. Are you going, hello, what have I been saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, Do you feel like they're finally ca- catching up to they're the They're beginning to get it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, you're seeing on the cover of Time and Newsweek and yep. everything, vegetables, vegetables, yeah, prevent yeah. cancer with vegetables. Yeah. It's it's really the key. And, mm-hmm. and you know, you know, organic is going to be a little more nutritious mm-hmm. oftentimes than are conventional. The soil is cared for a little more, and so on. So, yeah. and all of that is important. It's all important. Yeah, man. Exercise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, the vegetables is not a hard sell for me. I don't. No, know why. it's not. You're a vegetable guy. Yeah, I love. Yeah. I love my veggies, man. And I don't know why yeah. people are so reticent about doing it. I think it's a habit, and also developed tastes in, in childhood. When they're given too much sugar, then they end up craving sugar all the time, and. Um, I've got a grandson. His parents are really good with diet and nutrition, but he will not eat anything green. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You know? Kids. Yeah, I mean, kids. How how many parents do you see that, you know, their kids live on chicken fingers and mac and cheese and and peanut butter? I know, and that's it. That's (laughs) it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, They have to learn how how to like vegetables. Julie Sawyer, RM, Dr. Pamela Herring. Uh, licensed a naturopathic doctor, Greg, who has no title. Um, Thank you, but great question. T- talent show great tomorrow question. night. Get your tickets. Conquered Food Co-op.